The primary material used to manufacture chips is pure silicon. The choice of this material is no coincidence. Silicon has semiconductor properties that allow it to efficiently conduct electric current under certain conditions, which is essential for creating microchips. But silicon crystals don't just appear out of thin air, they are grown. Like mushrooms, can you imagine? Specialized companies are responsible for growing silicon, providing the semiconductor materials needed to produce microchips. The main suppliers are Japanese, Taiwanese, German, and American companies. Silicon monocrystals are formed using the Chokralski method, where silicon is melted and then gradually cooled to form a large cylindrical ingot. In a high temperature furnace, a seed crystal, also called a seed, is slowly pulled from the molten silicon while rotating. This ingot is then sliced into thin silicon wafers, usually between 200 and 300 microns thick. These silicon wafers are polished to a perfect smoothness and cleaned of any contaminants to prevent defects in the future microchips. This is done using special chemical solutions and mechanical procedures. Next, chip designers create the architecture, which includes millions of transistors, logic gates, and other components necessary to perform artificial intelligence tasks. This is an incredibly complex process, requiring a high level of specialization and the use of automated design software. First, they design the chip's architecture, the structure and layout of all the components. The architecture of an artificial intelligence chip may include graphics processing units, neural network processors, and specialized computing blocks designed for high-efficiency matrix operations. During the design verification phase, computer simulations are used to test and validate the design. This allows for the identification and correction of errors before moving on to physical production. The next stage in chip production is called photolithography. Photolithography is a crucial technology for manufacturing microchips, involving the creation of the pattern for future electrical circuits on a silicon wafer using light. This is one of the most critical steps because it determines the precision and density of the components on the chip. A specialized robotic machine, equipped with tweezers to avoid direct contact and prevent contamination, handles the silicon wafer. The machine then immerses the wafer in chemical baths with cleaning solutions to remove any dust particles, oils, or other impurities. Afterward, the wafer is placed on a machine that spins it at high speeds to evenly distribute a layer of light-sensitive material across its surface. It's similar to placing the wafer on a fast-spinning disk and dropping liquid on top, allowing the material to spread out through the spinning motion. To apply the pattern onto the wafer, a process called light exposure is used. A machine, similar to a large projector, uses a photo mask, essentially a template that allows light to pass through in specific areas. This projector directs ultraviolet light through the photo mask, and the light reaches the photoresist only in certain spots. It's like using a stencil for painting, where the paint only goes through the cutout areas. After exposure, the wafer is again immersed in a chemical solution, but this time to develop the image. The solution dissolves the parts of the photoresist that were exposed to the light, or the parts that were not, depending on the type of photoresist. Think of it as developing a photograph, where the details of the pattern emerge in the chemical bath. Once the image is developed, the wafer moves to another machine for the etching process. This is similar to carving, and is called etching. The machine either sprays gas plasma onto the wafer, dry etching, or immerses it in a chemical solution, wet etching, to remove the unwanted material, leaving only the necessary parts behind. In the final stage, the wafer is cleaned again to remove any remaining photoresist. Machines immerse the wafer in chemical solutions or use special laser technologies to ensure it's thoroughly cleaned. Can you imagine how much micro-level work goes into all of this, just so my friends can ask artificial intelligence how to approach a girl? Or, get this, I overheard some girls asking ChatGPT to do tarot card readings for them. So, here we have people and machines working hard, meticulously developing technologies, and then someone's like, pull a card of the day for me. Admit it, do you get asked to do that kind of crazy stuff often? Anyway, let's continue. After the remaining photoresist is removed, the silicon wafer undergoes a visual inspection using microscopes. But it's all done by automated systems, 
robots and cameras scanning for even the tiniest defects to ensure everything is flawless. At every stage, nearly everything is handled by automated machines, because even the smallest mistake or speck of dust can damage the microchips. Humans mainly monitor the process, adjusting machine settings and troubleshooting if any issues arise. To create regions on the wafer with different electrical properties, a process called ion implantation is used. This involves introducing impurities into the silicon. Ions of a specific material are accelerated and embedded into the silicon wafer, altering its semiconductor characteristics. After implantation, the wafer undergoes a process called annealing, heating the wafer to activate the ions and restore the crystal structure of the silicon. Next, layers of metal, typically aluminum or copper, are applied to form electrical connections between the transistors and other components of the chip. After manufacturing is complete, each chip undergoes a thorough inspection for defects and a series of tests to confirm its performance. The testing includes checks for functionality, speed, heat resistance, and energy consumption. Chips that do not meet quality standards are either discarded or recycled. This process ensures that only products fully meeting all technical specifications are retained. Packaging chips is the final stage of production, where the finished chips are prepared for use in electronic devices. This process is also primarily carried out by automated machines. First, the silicon wafer, which contains hundreds or even thousands of chips, needs to be cut into individual chips. A special laser machine, or a precision diamond cutter, is used to slice the wafer into separate tiny chips. This process is called dicing. Once the wafer is cut, each chip is attached to a substrate, base, which helps connect it to the rest of the electronics. An automatic die attach machine picks up each chip and precisely places it on the substrate, using a special adhesive or other material to secure it in place. For the chip to interact with other components, it needs to be connected to the substrate with very thin wires. This is done using a wire bonding machine, which welds fine gold or aluminum wires that link the chip to the contacts on the substrate. After the chips are connected, they must be protected from mechanical damage, dust, moisture, and other harmful elements. To achieve this, the chips are enclosed in protective casings. An automatic chip packaging machine covers the chip with a special plastic or epoxy resin. This process involves encapsulating the chip in a protective material, creating a durable casing around it. After testing, the chips are marked with information such as the model, serial number, and other relevant data. This is done using laser marking machines, which quickly and accurately apply all necessary information to the surface of the chip's casing. Once testing and marking are complete, the chips are packed into anti-static boxes or specialized plastic tapes for easy transportation. Automated packing machines organize the chips in rows, package them in special containers, and prepare them for shipment to customers. The chips are inspected to ensure they meet all standards and are ready for transport. This process is overseen by logistics personnel and automated systems, which manage the warehouse, sort the products, and handle shipping to clients.